The Quark model works very well and it perfectly describes an experimental data and even predicts a new subatomic particles. But this model was static. That is it did not include any information how an elementary particles move inside the proton and how they interact to each other. Such description became available in the framework of the so-called part model, proposed by Richard Feynman in 1968. In according with this model the proton is built from some constituents, which were called by Feynman as a partons. Each part inside the given proton carries out some part, or fraction, of its momentum, its electric charge, its spin and so on. In principle, the number of such partons inside the proton is not restricted, that is, it is arbitrary. When an electron or other elementary particle collides with the proton, it interacts with these partons. In general, at this moment, we cannot calculate exactly the result of such interaction, because the elementary particles are not in elastic spheres. They are a complicated objects, which have an electric charge, a spin, a mass and so on, that is, they interact by means of all four fundamental interactions. To find the result of such collision we should take into account all these interactions, which is very complicated task. However, a quantum field theory gives us a possibility to evaluate the result with a high precision, which is compatible with the precision of the corresponding experiment, that is, the precision of the experiments and the precision of the theoretical computations are of the same order. According to the quantum field theory in the collision between the electron and the parton, the particles affect each other through exchange of a so-called virtual particles, which for this process is a light quantum or a virtual photon. The exchange with one virtual photon will give main contribution to the result of the interaction. To improve the obtained result we should take into account more virtual particles but in many cases this is not necessary. The virtual photon carries energy, which is transferred from one colliding particle to another colliding particle during their interaction. Usually, a physicist consider the virtual photon separately from the parent electron. This allows to make an analogy with a microscope. In both cases we used the photon to study the object of investigations. The more powerful photon, with a lesser wavelength, can resolve the smallest objects, as we learn from Rutherford's and Slack MIT experiments to study the detailed structure of the proton we should increase the energy of the particles, which will interact with the protons, to study the structure of the atom. Rutherford used an alpha particles with the energy 5 mega electron volts from an radium. To study the structure of the proton, the slack MIT experiment used the electrons with the energy 20 giga electron volts from a linear accelerator. To increase the energy of the interaction we should either enlarge the length of accelerator either improve the acceleration in an individual cell however we can unite two accelerators and collide the accelerated particles such scientific device and very large and very complicated engineering construction is usually called a collider usually the collider is consist of two charged particle accelerators in the form of rings, situated in the same tunnel under the ground. The charged particles are accelerated in the opposite directions, so they are collided in some interacting point. To investigate the structure of proton with the collider a special scientific center was built in Hamburg. This center is known as DESI. Deutsche Elektron Synchrotron. 
main device of DESI is HERA, Hadron Electron Ring Accelerator, DESI's largest synchrotron and storage ring, with a circumference of 6,336 meters. HERA's tunnel runs 10 to 25 meters below ground level. Two circular particle accelerators run inside the tube. One accelerated the electrons to energies of 27.5 giga electron volts, the other accelerated the protons to energies of 920 giga electron volts in the opposite direction. Both beams completed their circle nearly at the speed of light, making approximately 47,000 revolutions per second. At four places of the ring the electron and the proton beam could be brought to collision. In the process, electrons are scattered at the constituents of the protons, the partons or quarks and gluons. The collision between the electron and the proton will destroy the initial proton and will produce a lot of subatomic particles. Such process, which was studied at DESI, is usually called as a deep inelastic scattering. In the elastic scattering all kinetic energy of an interacting objects are the same before and after collision. The inelastic scattering means, that the part of the kinetic energy is transmitted to other kind of energy, for example, to destroy the second object. The products of these particle collisions, the scattered lepton and the quarks, which are produced by the fragmentation of the proton, were registered in a huge detectors. In the North Hall the H1 detector was constructed and in the South Hall the Zeus detector was installed. Both detectors have a special cylindrical form along the ring of accelerator such the interaction point are situated in the center of detector, what allow to obtain the maximally possible information about a collision, as sub-detectors are situated around the interaction point as a concentric cylindrical layers. At HERA, it was possible to study the structure of protons up to 30 times more accurately than before. The resolution covered structures one thousandth of the proton in size. This picture present one of the most important result from the investigation of the deep inelastic scattering processes, this is the part and distribution function of the proton. Variable x means the size, which we can resolve inside the proton, from the beginning we do not see anything inside the proton, that is we see the proton as a whole object and the electron is scattered on the proton as in Rutherford's experiment. Increasing the energy of the colliding particles we decrease the size, which we can resolve, that is we increase the magnification of our microscope. Now, the virtual photon, which responsible on the interaction between the electron and the proton, has a small wavelength and it can penetrate into the proton. Then, we have found two U quarks and one D quark, which build the proton in the framework of the quark model. These quarks, which respect to the properties of the subatomic particles according the quark model are called valence quarks. The scattering in this case can be imagined as follows. We have the proton, which consist of three quarks with the different colors. These quarks define the properties of the proton as the subatomic particle. The virtual photon absorbs by one quark. The quark obtains the energy from the virtual photon and try go out from the proton. This produce an quark antiquark pair through a breaking of a string. The interacting quark and the antiquark from the quark antiquark pair will form a new subatomic particle, meson, while the quark from the quark antiquark pair will stay inside the proton and will replace the interacting quark. But if we will increase the resolution further, we have found a lots of other quarks and a lots of gluons. 
this due to any two charged particles, electrically charged or color charged, produce a lot of virtual particles during their interactions. So, the valence quarks swim in the sea from the virtual quarks and gluons, which are continuously produced and annihilated inside the proton. If the energy of photon will large, it will interact with the C quarks and gluons. The scattering with the C quark can be imagined as follows. The three valence quarks of the proton swim in the C from the virtual quarks. As the number of the C quarks is more than the valence quarks, the virtual photon mostly will be absorbed by the C quark. Quark obtains the energy from the virtual photon and try go out from the proton. This produces the quark antiquark pair through the breaking of the string. The interacting quark and the antiquark from the quark antiquark pair will form a new meson, while the quark from the quark antiquark pair will stay inside the proton and will replace the interacting quark. The number of gluons which can be found inside the proton, is increased very fast with the increasing of the resolution, while for U quarks and D quarks the situation are opposite. The scattering with the gluon can be imagined as follows. The three valence quarks of the proton swim in the sea from the virtual quarks and the virtual gluons, the virtual photon can interact only with the electrically charged particle, that is only with the quark. So, the virtual photon absorbs by the C quark. Quark obtains the energy from the virtual photon and try go out from the proton. But as the number of the gluons is much more with compared to quarks, this quark will interact immediately with the gluon and will transmit all its energy to this gluon. Now, gluon try go out from the proton, but it connects with some quarks by means of the string. The breaking of this string produces the quark antiquark pairs. One quark and one antiquark from these pairs will form a new meson, while other quark and antiquark will stay inside the proton. The proton is a very complicated object. However, the investigation of the deep inelastic scattering at DESI provides us with a valuable information about the structure of the proton through the parton distribution function. We know with the high precision how the different elementary particles, quarks and gluons, are arranged inside the proton according their fundamental properties. This information is used for the descriptions of the events on the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, where protons are collided with the very high energy. Because we know the structure of the proton, we know what we should expect from such collisions. We can make a lot of predictions. In particular, we can calculate how a Higgs particles will born. In spite of we know a lot of information about the structure of the proton and all other subatomic particles, we still have a lot of unresolved problems and puzzles. Among them are the confinement, the proton spin puzzle, the existence of exotic hadrons such as pentaquark and glue ball, and the study of the quark gluon plasma. It is possible that somebody from the audience will make a discovery in these investigations.